Speaking of Hit Boy putting together albums, Benny the Butcher just dropped his uh, Everybody Can't Go album Friday. And um, it was half produced. I won't say half, but it was produced by Hit Boy and the Alchemist. Now, I mean, it's more like 65, 35 or 60, yeah, 40. Something like that, yeah. Actually, actually, I know exactly how many beats that they did because I put it in my notes. Because and, and Coop one, has hella notes, I'm sure. This is a... Yeah, huh. five by... Five by Alchemist, seven by Hit Boy, twelve okay. all together. Okay, okay. So yeah, it's more of a sixty forty, if you will, almost something yeah. like that. Um, okay. Right. First things first. When I heard the album initially, I liked it. You know what I'm saying. And the second time I listened to it, I liked it even more. Um, I don't know where some of these reviews are coming from. You know, when it comes to this album, because this is what you call mixed reviews, right? You got some people who are saying it's super dope, and some people that are saying it was weak. I mean, I'm seeing that in the chat. The people are saying that the album's weak, and I don't really know where we're getting that from. I have a few theories here and there, but one of my theories off top, well, I'm going to go with two. First things first, I think the, the uh, pushing back of the album and the anticipation of the album and the DMX statement might have some people feeling that way. The second thing is, I think that the way that the singles were released, um, I think that the way that the singles were released made people feel a way about the album altogether. Because when I listen to the album today, from beginning to end, and I'm hearing Big Dog for what it is, and not as like a single, but just an album that's in the song. I'm like, oh, this song is hard. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And, and yes. I think that in, in the times that we live in, and I know that Griselda is, you know, they're one of the big proponents of this, giving their audience a massive amount of music. I think once you try to slow down that, it kind of takes away from the songs that you're having on the album because people have heard them for weeks and months now. So I think maybe that's some of the effect that we're getting. But I was listening to the album today. I'm like, I didn't get to a song that I thought that was skip worthy until the record with Jada. And and I think that's a dope record. First of all, uh, what are you talking about? Pillow Talk and Slander? Yeah. That record dope. First of all. I like it too. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I think the production on that song is a little bit less it's it's not as um it's not as big and grandioso as the other records because look we're looking at we're looking at jermaine's graduation fire Braun, fire big dog fire everybody can go fire i like that record too tmvtl dope i love the record with snoop back again i think that should have been the single really if we we're going to be perfectly honest uh, Buffalo Kitchen Club, that's hard. Amani Caesar killed that. And then, yeah, getting the Pillow Talk and Slander. And I think that that record is dope, but that would be the first one that I would possibly skip, if that makes any sense. And even after so, that, How to Rap, Fire. Like, so, I think a couple things are at play right now. Okay. Um. The first thing that I think is that when you compare your Def Jam debut to It's Dark and Hell is Hot, you're only setting yourself up for a disservice to be done because just quite frankly, Mike, there I'm not I'm Mike at this stage in the game, I don't even know if there's been 15 albums made in the history of rap better than It's Dark and Hell is Hot. No. You know? I mean, you know, it would be hard It's definitely press, not but... 20. There aren't 20 there aren't there are not 20 rap albums better than It's Dark and Hell is Hot in the history of rap. Huh. And so, yeah, not twenty. They're not. That's you, an interesting you statement. List, no, you can't. You can't list twenty albums better than it's dark and hell is hot. Because because when you start measuring the impact and the importance and the timing of it, yeah, then get to the actual quality and then listen to the actual classic nature of the singles and then the classic natures of the songs on the album that aren't singles. There's not twenty albums better. I don't think that there's fifteen at this stage because it's one of those <laughs> albums that the older that it gets the more astonished I am at the fact that he did it 
and went like quadruple platinum while doing it on top of that, Mike. On his turn. Without even getting into the record sales, Mike. Think about it. Yeah. It did doggy style type numbers, and it's definitely not easy to digest like doggy style. No, no, that's you a know what point. I mean. Yeah. So degree of difficulty extremely high in terms of time and all that. And so when you compare and your album to truly one of rap's all time great rap albums and classics, and and your album isn't that. I think people are going to backlash harder. But, Mike, I do think there is some KD treatment going on where it's like, well, KD oftentimes doesn't get the props that LeBron and Steph get, and it has nothing to do with rings. It has to do with how he's treated the media. And I think the way Benny has talked at times to the fans and about the fans I do think there is some sincere backlash going on because of it. And I think some of the people that were invested in his comeuppance would rather see him lose than win at this point based on the statements that he's made. Hmm, like, you think that? Hold on, let me yeah, get to some, I mean, somebody, somebody pulled up on me today, Mike, and was like, oh, are you rating like that? Rating him like that, Coop, because you met him? And I'm thinking to myself, when the hell have I ever done that? But that's the type of, I feel like, fire he's ignited with some of his commentary and that has nothing to do with the music it's about the music dot with the super chat says Vinny is one dimensional and it shows in this album see i didn't get that you know what i mean and what i, I got that. that's wrong and, and if you guys want to talk about subject matter sure but the versatility from you know the flow and being able to take on different styles of production i mean that's why i like the uh, song with snoop so much um but what I think has happened here is I think that that Griselda sound has been so embedded in their fan base that I don't think that their fans want to allow them to do anything outside of that, no matter how good it sounds. I agree with that, Mike. So I'm going to kind of work in reverse before I start breaking down these records. I realized today, really, while the album, like I realized it the night that I met him. But after listening to the album, I was and then seeing how people were responding, I was like, oh, no, everybody can't go because here's the thing about it. He veered off from the quote unquote traditional Griselda sound, Mike, but he didn't veer too far off. And the way people are responding is if he just left the reservation and left the core fan base stranded, Mike, that's just some bullshit. And quite frankly, it's like one of those things where it's like, I mean, I think people who watch this show know. I don't struggle with my confidence, Mike. But I confidently say that part of what makes me, I feel like the best reviewer in this space is because I don't literally listen to what anybody has to say without a valid argument and explanation. And I don't hear valid arguments and explanations for the vitriol and for the lackluster response, Mike. And I'm not saying that it's in this vein of caliber or album, Mike. But I, I felt like today in the last couple of days, I was like... Yeah, this is when niggas tried to tell me it was written was just okay. And it was written was just a good rap album. I remember that. Mike, I'm going to remember those conversations to the day that I die. Niggas was walking around acting like it was written was just a good regular rap album. It's like, yeah, it's good. I'm like, it's good. It's like, what the fuck are you listening to? Like, and, and I bring up it was written because that was the album that taught me to double down on what I heard and not what I hear people say. And so I'm not listening to what people have to say about this project because I think much like it was written, the, the legend of the album is going to grow with time. Like when Sean said this album needs to mature, I couldn't express or echo that sentiment enough because not saying it's it was written because it's not. But it's the type of vibe about the response that I'm getting where it's like, you understand how hard it is to put together a rap album that like literally barely has any skips and really in my opinion doesn't have a skip at all till Griselda Express in my opinion which I'm going to talk about because that should have been one of the highlights of the album and I think it actually might be the low light of the album and we can oh get into yeah, that yeah, yeah 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 I, I agree with that now that I agree with like I said the first song that I would say I may skip was the one with Jada but that song's better than the Griselda song yeah the weakest song on here is Griselda Express in my opinion but I, and I say this. I don't know what to really say about that because that's usually the strong moment in their album. Usually the strong moment. But again, no, I think that's attributed to the fact that 
it sounds like he wanted to get away from that core sound. And so in, yes, in the midst of getting away from that core sound, when it's time to do a record with the core guys, it probably didn't sound as as uh, effortless as it normally does. Well, here's the reality of the matter, Mike. Part of the reason why he's trying to get away from the core sound is because they only have one gold plaque to show for this brilliant run of music that they've made. And that's sad to me. And well, so even I'm outside gonna of that, that, though, Coop, because everybody says they're cool. one-dimensional and, you know what I'm saying, everything sounds the same. So it's like, everybody yeah, just, the whole Mike, thing was to get out of that sound anyway. Mike, everybody that's saying that doesn't listen to Conway the Machine. Yeah. Okay. Like, everybody that's saying that hasn't been paying attention to Conway for, like, literally the last four years when they're saying that all those guys are one-dimensional. Conway is super versatile. Conway is actually one of our more versatile songwriters that we have in this space right now about his willingness to talk about everything. Like I was listening to the tear gas song with him and, uh, and Wayne and Rick Ross. He's literally talking about, you know, uh, when he's talking about and a, and a, and a nigga like Russell Wil Wilson raising your child, real shit. I ain't seen my son in months. It's like, no, that's not shoot him up. Bang talk, Mike. That's that yep. nigga not seeing his son and talking about how his baby mom is tripping and he don't see his son enough. Like that's not boom, 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 boom. So yep. the people, so the people that make these comments, I don't think they really, to quote Tribe Called Quest, Mike, I don't think they checked the rhyme. I don't think they checked the rhyme, but here's what I thought about today, Mike. I'm going to list some songs out for you. And I'm never, I was never a fan of really these songs the way I was their core catalog, but I understand on a day like today why they made these songs, Mike. Listen to the records I'm about to list off to you. Hate me now. The city is mine. You owe me sunshine. If I rule the world, hard knock life, street dreams, big pimping, Dr. Knock boot, who you wit. You want to know what, Mike, on a day like today? I didn't, I never loved any of these records like that, except for maybe, yeah, if I rule the world's probably my favorite record of those 10 that I just named or who you wit by Jay. But I realized those guys made those records because your core fan base We'll have your ass barely going gold forever in New York. All right. And the fact that those guys made those records, I realize now they made those records because they just didn't want to go down as some traditional boom bap MCs. And I'm bringing up those records because Benny didn't go as far off the reservation as Nas and Jay did to get his, to get his notoriety or his fame right now. And so I'm really wondering what all the backlash is for. Cause Mike, we talking about our one and two MCs, right? However you want to mix and match it. No, they made these records. Do these records sound like New York State of Mind and Dead Presidents to you, Mike? Does that sound like the world is yours and the evils to you, Mike? Does that sound well, like Can I Live and Represent? They had to get on the radio, and they were obligated, you know, through contractual obligations to sell records at those times, and they needed a record that was going to get on the radio to sell them their records. And is Benny not signed to a major label now? Yeah. I mean, he signed a Def Jam, Mike. This is a Def Jam album. Mm -hmm. This isn't this isn't a fucking mixtape that's about to circulate around the tri-state area and get played in Buffalo. He's on Def Jam. I understand both so sides people, of it, and we just had this conversation. I don't we were understand just talking about Big Crit. We were just talking about Big Crit, and it's the same label. And I think that there are some artists, and I think Benny, I think he's done his best to to kind of work those both worlds. But there are some artists who have such a grassroots following that that following doesn't want them to make the Def Jam album, if you will. And Big Crit is an example of that, which was 10 years ago, but it's the same, it's the same thing. Now, granted, I do think that Benny's uh, Def Jam debut was better than Big Crit's Def Jam debut, but I think it's the same concept. Let me get to these super chats real quick. Uh, Mad Max says, uh, "How to rap in the Armani joint is the best two tracks to me, but the album is decent." He said, "I don't see any great songs on the project; just decent or pretty good." That's big coming from Mad Max, actually. Um, hold on, Chris. I with the super from Mad Max. <laughs> You're right, Chris. With the super chat says, "It's a good album, Coop." Mike, my opinion is that the hook game could have been better. And guys, I really see uh, that voice matters. That's hurting it. What do you think about that assessment? I don't agree with that assessment at all. The hooks on this album are just fine. And so is his voice. 
What's wrong today, Mike, is the people who can't let go of Tana Talk 3 and Plugs I Met. Mike, I went and listened to Plugs I Met today, Mike. People talk about Daytona being short. Y'all understand Plugs I Met is only six songs, and he only has one song by himself, Mike. It's not a mixtape. It's an EP. Mm -hmm. Stop talking about Plugs I Met like it's some sort of full-length player, Mike. He's got Conway on there. He's got Black Thought on there. He's got Pusha T on there. And it's only six fucking songs, Mike. <laughs> he literally has he literally has one solo record on Plugs I Met, Mike. One. So we have no idea based on Plugs I Met what his solo capability looks like, Mike. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when people are walking around talking this Plugs I Met shit, it's like, first of all, you're talking about an EP. You're not talking about an album or a mixtape. Get your shit together. And then the second part of it, Mike, it's about 19 minutes long, and about eight minutes of that airtime is guest is guest appearances. He's literally only rapping on there for about 10 minutes, Mike. That's three rap songs by yourself. So stop holding on. This is what I'm that's, saying about That's why I didn't give it album of the year in that year when it was going up against Eve from Rhapsody and Born to Rap from the game. So You gave it the Born to Rap by the game. Yeah. Because, yeah, because those are full length players where those people are rapping like, you know, more than 10 minutes, like within the first three or four songs on the album, Mike. No. And so no. what, what I'm saying is, is, is that people got the catalog fucked up and a lot of this stuff that y'all are calling mixtapes from Benny aren't even mixtapes. Some of the stuff is albums. Like I went and listened to Benny's whole catalog the last couple of days, Mike. The only album that he truly has that truly stands out as better than this is Tana Talk 3. If you think Tana Talk 4 is better, we could have an argument about it because it's got John P's Caddy. It's got Super, uh, Super Plug. It's got Back Two Times with Stove. It's got <laughs> some stuff on there. It's got um, um, Tyson vs. Ali with Conway. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, it's got some shit on there, Mike. But unless you're talking about Tana Talk 3 or 4, don't come to me with this he didn't do a good job shit. And, uh, and for the people that are saying that Burden of Proof is better, y'all are wild. The first single off Burden of Proof was Timeless. That shit is whack, Mike. I said it was whack when it came out, Mike. I listened to it today. It's still fucking whack. Leroy Green with the Super Chat says, What up, fellas? But in my opinion, Benny should have learned more, leaned more into the mainstream because people act like the point of the major is giving them the mixtape vibe. No. It's not. No. So, hold on, Mike. I've never said this on the show before. I agree with Leroy 1000%. That's why I bought up those Jay and Nas records. For the way that motherfuckers are acting about this project, he should have just went ahead and went completely off the reservation and did his fucking thing. He had a record with Drake. I don't know what happened to the record. That shit should have been on here because the way people are talking about it. And stop asking this man to make Tana Talk 3. That shit is six years old, Mike. That beat the, uh, or not beat, but that record, the Hit Boy was premiering like months ago. That wasn't on here. The one no. that uh, Hit Boy had on Twitter, that shit was hard. That Mike, wasn't on here. There's hard shit on here. When people oh, are talking about, when people are talking about there's no great songs on here, Mike, what the fuck is trust more valuable than love with the Alchemist beat switch? It's hard. What the fuck would you call that? How often do you hear Benny tell a story with a great hook where the beat switches three times? I hear people talking about how Hit Boy outperformed Alchemist. He did outperform Alchemist. Hit Boy's the best hip-hop producer in the game right now. Stop making it seem like Alchemist did a bad job and these beats aren't good. All of you niggas, if you knew how to rap, would take these beats and rap over them. These beats are dope, Mike. Shout out to Fiber Phoenix with the super chat. He knows how to rap. He got some dope shit out. He actually said he's coming to Atlanta in March and want us to be in the music video. So we're gonna coordinate that. He says decent. Braun is fire. Um, very got yourself a gunish, but the album not close to Stillmatic. Uh, talking level and impact not comparing artists. Um, yeah, it's hard to match that kind of impact in today's climate, though. I think that stop for what comparing, stop comparing Benny to the greatest MC who ever lived. That's, <laughs> That's high praise. High praise. It's not what we're doing. Andrew That's why Green. I said it gave it's wild. Andrew Green with the super chat says, "I appreciate y'all, fellas, uh, for showing love to our platform and our list. Thank you for letting us break down the entire process. Salute all day, man." Appreciate y'all. First of all, Mike, Mike, as far as beat selection, Mike, this is the best beat selection that he's picked from beginning to end on any album. I felt that so way, too. I felt that way, so too. Pe 
So people talking about how Alchemist just did okay, it's like, I'm sorry, like you just don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Alchemist did a great job. Hit Boy did a stellar job. Did they do a classic job? No, Mike. But trust more valuable than love. Like that Alchemist beat switch on three different levels with the hook, with the acronym, with the actual story behind it. How often does Benny even tell a story, Mike? Right. It's almost like it's it's not, and it's not like he's telling some offbeat love story, Mike. It's still he's still keeping it street. And I just wish he would have just went off the reservation for how people are behaving. Mike, the record, the record with Armani, Mike, Buffalo oh. Kitchen, that shit is hard. That hook that's is That's really stellar. Alchemist right there. That's, Mike, that's Alchemist. And here's the thing about it. Benny and Armani have chemistry. I've been saying They're it since I heard Drillarama on yeah. the Liz. They need to do a project together, they Mike. Do. When they get I together, it's fire. You know, that Armani's is flow is so understated. Armani's it tough, is. man. Yeah. Like, how about this, Mike? Buffalo Kitchen going to get played down here in some spots. I Buffalo bet you it is. Chris with Buffalo the Super Chat says, Coop, voice does matter. I'm 50 years old, and you know uh, the content I listen to. Rapping is good, but creatively, he's lacking here. This is what I'm saying. Creatively, how many people are really diverse in this space, like you say? Like, if, you, if, if we're going to have that conversation about diversity, it's like diversity doesn't equal good album. See Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. <laughs> Yo, I talked to Ron Bay about this album. Ron Bay hit me or whatnot. Shout out to Ron Bay up top. He was like, uh, he loved it. He said it was a really dope album. One of his critiques was the sequencing. And he said he wished that they would have actually did an outro as opposed to ending with Big Timers because that Big Timers ending seemed kind of weird. I'm kind of with that. So, Mike, so can I tell you that my biggest critique of this album is the sequencing. First of all, How to Rap should be the last song on this album. I agree. Um, quite frankly, not to be funny, I think Griselda Express hurt this album and you could have just taken the song off altogether because the expectations are too high and they're too unrealistic. Um, it's probably Benny's worst verse on the album. It's a less than stellar Conway verse for what we know him to be because he is one of the best MCs of this era. And the West Side Gun Hook is not that good. And that's probably the weakest Alchemist beat of the five that he gave. And so if there's a throwaway on this album, it's actually the Griselda record, which is wild. You'll never hear me say that again, probably. Nicodemus of the Super Chat says, Griselda Express is fire. Big timers is weak. It's not. It's the weakest song on the album, and I'm disappointed. <laughs> I'm going to call a spade a spade. Uh, Mike, but, but to, bring up the, um, to bring up the sequencing, I think, First of all, Stove sounds amazing on One Foot In, One Foot Out when you listen to it again. Stove is a star, man. Stove Stove. is a star, like we've been saying, Mike. We've been saying literally since we heard Stove. It's like, whoever that dude is, he's a star. Put him on. Put him in the front. Kevin Durant's been saying it, too. Kevin Durant said it because Kevin Durant follows according to hip-hop. I said it first. (laughs) Ain't nobody trying to give Kevin Durant credit. Shout out to Kevin Durant for following him and watching. No, no, no. Kevin Durant need to keep Phoenix... You need to keep Phoenix in fifth place and the Clippers in fourth place so they can beat their ass in the first round. That's what Kevin Durant needs to do right now. But one foot in and one foot out, Mike, I feel like needs to go in the second slot before Braun on this album, and it needs to go Jermaine's graduation, one foot in and one foot out, which I think is part of the theme of this album, as in one foot in my old sound, one foot out my old sound, one foot in, one foot out. And then go into Braun and Big Dog. I think that's a better play. And then I think um, the Buffalo Kitchen record and Trust More Valuable Than Love need to be swapped out. Like Trust More Valuable Than Love is five. Buffalo Kitchen is eight. Swap those records out. Because Trust More Valuable Than Love, that type of story, that's got more of a – like how about this, Mike, to go back to It Was Written. My favorite song on It Was Written is The Setup. But it's track number nine on the album for a reason. 
You feel well, me? Well, you kind of sound like Ronve again. Ronve also said this. He said, this shit is like spades. You play to win. Get them aces and kings out there first and set the pace. Yes. Because I think trust more valuable than love has even more impact in the eight slot than in the five slot. Because what you expect from the five spot on an album is some cleanup. And so imagine if you move one foot in and one foot out up to number two. That pushes Braun down to three. That pushes Big Dog down to four. And then that puts everybody can't go down at five. And I think that's more an accurate feel. And then you can get into the back again with Snoop. You feel what I'm saying? You see how you set it up like that? And then you can get into your your uh, pillow talk and slander and your, uh, and your uh, trust more valuable than love. Um, I think I feel the like beat for pillow talk and slander could have been better. And maybe I'm feeling like that because the features that were on there and, you know, how well produced everything else is. The rhymes and everything are there, but I kind of... I mean, I don't feel to the degree that I do about Griselda Express, but I think it's a similar thing where it's like, these are two of the weaker That's, beats with all of these MCs on it. So so Alchemist had just an OK beat on here, and that would be Griselda Express. Hit Boy had an OK beat on here. It's Pillow Talking Slander. Mike, mm-hmm. all the other beats are fire. I agree. You're not about to tell me any What about Big Time, I like big timers, Mike. This is what I'm talking about. It's like, are you going to, do you want this man to to boom bap and push a brick like to the end? Mm-hmm. Like to the end, Mike, you want him to That's boom bap and want. push a brick to the end? <laughs> no, Mike, I want to hear Dota get more shows to rip. I suggest you go and roll with the click who you with. I mean, that's why personally, the record with Snoop Dogg, I love because that was something I never heard Benny do. Thank you. Yeah, you're supposed, to, and he sounded great man? doing it too. You know, how many I mean? times? Like, how many times have we applauded Nas and Jay for the chances that they take, Mike? It's like, oh, I wasn't expecting them to do that. Hey, like, thank you for giving me something different than your fastball. I yeah. know what your fastball looks like. You throw a hundred miles an hour. Do you have I'm an outcast? Curve? I'm an outcast tribe Ghost Space fan, so I like people taking chances. Right. I, Hold on, Mike. I like electric circus. I do. Yeah. I, I can stop that. <laughs> but here's what I'm saying. Like, you got to give people room to grow. And I think we've watched people, specifically from the New York area, try to contrive their favorite MCs at times. And I feel like his following is trying to contrive him right now. It's like, well, that's not what we want from you. And it's like, so what? Guess what? That nigga's almost 40. Maybe he doesn't want to talk about selling cocaine all the fucking time, Mike. How about that part about it? Maybe yeah. he actually wants to make quality rap records that other people who haven't pushed a quarter key understand. Did that ever occur to anybody? This is Mike. This is me talking. Nobody loves some street shit more than me, Mike. How many <laughs> times do I pull up and randomly talk about Mob Deep for no damn reason at all, Mike? Yeah. This is me uh, talking. He's almost 40. He's trying to expand his palette. He's trying to get new listeners and new followers. Part of what made Jay and Nas the GOAT is not only because they expanded their following, but their core following stuck with them through them expanding their following. Yeah. So yeah. this shit that some of the people is on, and y'all saying that it's a 3, a 3.5, I'm not saying that you don't know shit because that's rude, but you're just not as good as me as, at this. And I'm telling you that you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. No, you're he wrong. deserves you're better treatment. He, de- he deserves better treatment than this from his core fan base that's been supporting him for real, Mike. Like he does. I think, I think we found the first topic of one of our spaces. We've got to do one of you these think, spaces and talk think, about you, Mike, I wrote down them songs because you really would have thought he made you owe me or, or Dr. Knockboot or some shit the way people are acting. I mean, you know what? When now I, I know you big- owe me or Dr. Knockboot on here, nigga. When I was driving and I heard Big Dog today and I heard Wayne's voice, I I mean, not voice, his verse, I thought it was special in the fact that this literally sounds like 05, 06 Wayne. It really did. Like, this was one of those, and I'm not trying to gas it up or anything, but it was similar to, like, when I heard Magic. It's like, okay, well, this sounds like 98. 99 like if you would have told me big dogs wayne verse was an old verse 
I could believe it. He sounds like old Wayne on there. I didn't know he could still sound like that. Mike, Benny's verse is getting understated on Big Dog because of how great Wayne's verse is. The hook is understated, Mike. He He's literally telling you in, in the verse, I'm a long way from that brick of fit. No, my driver stood outside while I hid raw. Like he's literally telling you he's moved on from it in the record, Mike. Well, that was another thing that Rave said in the text too. He said, "He said that verse or that uh, hook on Big Dog is fire." Mike, I can't front. When I listen to Big Dog now, this is why this is why albums are important, Mike. Braun and Big Dog back to back together on this album sound phenomenal in sequence together, Mike. Was it a mistake putting both of them out um, before the album dropped, though? Mike, the way people are behaving, I wouldn't have put any of these records out. I'm not joking. <laughs> you gonna pull one of I those of uh, the people don't deserve a Kendrick Lamar album move? No, 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 no. We're not gonna be bougie about niggas who making whack shit. These are actually good songs Benny is making. Unlike Kendrick. Unlike Kendrick, Benny is actually making quality records. You wanna know what a three is? You know what I wanna know what a three point five is? Mr. Morale and the big steppers, Mike. That's what I'm saying when people are tripping calling this a three or three point five. No, that bullshit Kendrick put out was a three or three point five. You wanna hear a three or three point five, Mike? Go listen to most of the rap albums that came out last year. This ain't that. Well, all right. Right. We got 103 so a lot votes of 3. here. 3.5 last year. We got 103 votes here, right? And so I was asking people what would they rate the album. I got five, four and a half, four, three and a half. Didn't go any lower than that. 50% of the people are saying three and a half. 37% are saying four. 9% saying 4.5. And 5% saying five. And this is out of 103 Mike. votes right now. I don't Mike. know if y'all think it's a three. I don't think this is a three. That's why that wasn't even an option. Like, come on. Mike, Mike, this is how you know. The people are some haters, Mike. There's not one boom, 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 boom on this album except for West Side. There's not. Sure. Mike, there's not. Mike, there ain't no wrestling skit on here, Mike. You feel what I'm saying? This doesn't sound like a Griselda album at all. And, and not in a bad way. And I think that. people are punishing him for that. But yes. when you go it's out like, when the hell Griselda album, they'll say, oh, well, all this stuff sound the same. They're the tough spot. Right. Oh, oh, Mike, Mike, the number one complaint about this crew is that they have been redundant and not switching it up enough. And then and then here he comes and switches it up and everybody's like, this isn't good. It's like, nigga, what do you want? What do you want? I tell you what, you want to know what he's going to call? He's going to go call Pablo Escobar right now and go pump a brick into the whole city for all you niggas. Right. Ten bricks for all you niggas. All right. Because that's what you're really asking him to do. Do people understand what they're asking him to do? Like, you're literally asking him to stay the same by telling me that you don't like this product. I, I, he's in a tough place, man. Or they're in a tough place because I think Conway's in a similar place. Conway's been doing different things, like you said. He got the song with Jill Scott and this and that, and people act like it don't exist. Right. Mike, we were the only people that I heard talk about Chanel Pearls repeatedly. Mm -hmm. That's wild. It's a beautiful record. Yeah. And the 106 and Park Days, that would have been a hit. Let you You gotta let you gotta let go and let this crew grow. But everybody saying that this is a three, three point five, y'all are wrong. Like, first of all, Mike, we're gonna put it in the grading scale right quick. Yeah. And my my expectation is that it's gonna be our highest ranking album of the four this year because it's the best rap album I've heard this year, Mike. I think it's the best album this year. Best hip hop album this year. We're in January, so you know people don't spaz out. We've got a lot of dope projects in January already, Mike. And yeah, we this do. Is one of them. I, listen, I'm not gonna like, lie, on, man, because on. I sat I here people. on the same podcast when Burden of Proof came out, and I wasn't a huge fan of it. And everybody's saying that Burden of Proof is better than this album. This album's better than Burden of Proof. Now I'll go back. Mike. I'll go back and listen to Burden of Proof again, I, and listen to this no. one back to. I'll do that, but. Off of first couple listens, this album's better than Burton Approved. Mike, Coop did that. So hopefully you don't have to go through that. <laughs> I listened to Burton Approved today, Mike. Mm -hmm. Mike, let, you want to pull up the track list in the Burton Approved right quick? Because this is what I mean where I'm literally starting to question niggas' ear about shit. Mike, there are so many skips on Burton Approved. And I think Burton Approved is still a four. But, man, y'all are fucking tripping. Mike, 
hold on. You want to go song for song right quick? Sure. Mike, do you even remember? The, do you even remember the song "Burden of Proof" that started off the album, Mike? Do you even remember the record? Off the top of my head, I'm I'm gonna say no, but I mean, you want to know why, Mike? Because the record ain't that good, Mike. <laughs> Where would I go, featuring Rick Ross? You remember that? I remember that. No, what's better, that or Braun? Braun's better. Right. So Jermaine's graduation is better than Burden of Proof. Braun's better than Where Would I Go? Sly Green, Mike, or Big Dog? I'm going Big Dog. I would call it a tie. Sly Green was about my favorite record on there. Sly Everybody Green can't time. go or one Everybody, yeah, Sly Green was my shit. Everybody can't go or one way flight. That's one way flight. That's one, one way, way flight's flight. the highlight. Of one way flight's the best song on Burden of Proof. Correct. Mm -hmm. I think so. Somebody said do a station. Mike, we will. You're gonna <laughs> sound like fools, Mike. Famous or trust more valuable than love? Trust more valuable than love, Mike. It's four to one already. We're five songs in. Both of the songs tracks are twelve albums long. Both of the albums are twelve tracks long. You want to keep going, Mike? Timeless or the Snoop record back again? Back again. Easy. Easy. Mike. Mike. New Streets or One Foot In, One Foot Out with Stove? One Foot In, One Foot Out. It's blowing burden of proof out the water. What are you niggas talking about? For real. Recency bias, maybe. Mike. Over the Limit featuring Dom Kennedy or Buffalo Kitchen with Armani Caesar? Buffalo Kitchen. Mike, we're on track eight. One Way Flight is the only song that's better. Do you remember when I just said to Adriel, when I said the only records that would make this album are Sly Green, One Way Flight, and War Paint? Do you see what I'm talking about now? Yeah, yeah. Mike, Trade It All or Pillow Talk and Slander? Hmm. That might be Trade It All. Yeah. So right now, Mike, we're nine records in. It's seven to fucking two. The fuck are people talking about? Mike, thank Sorry. God I made it. Thank God I made it. Or how to rap, Mike. How to rap. Eight to two. War paint or Griselda Express? War paint. That's war paint. Yeah. Mike, eight to three. Legend or big timers? I can give it the legend. The legend. And you know what? We'll go ahead and give Sly Green that one too, because everybody in the chat's going crazy. But Mike. Even if we give them Sly Green, it's still seven to five. True. It's not Nic better. Nicodemus of the Super Chat says, uh, B.O.P. is uh, his most mid-album. E.C.G. is better by far. Um, you want to bring up Tana Talk 4, Mike? Because I listened to it up against Tana Talk 4, too. Mm. See, why niggas is just out here talking this shit, I'm actually studying and taking <laughs> notes and listening to every project that the man made. Right. Super, super chat. Hold on. Talking, he says Benny's album shit, was I. He said Benny's album was I. Master Ace's album is better. We are gonna talk Master Ace on Wednesday. No, nigga, you just all right. All right, <laughs> your ear is just all right. That's why I'm saying is it's like dudes are just going off of how they feel. No, no. When I listen to something, I take notes and then I go study and then I do a comparative analysis of the man's catalog. And the only thing better than this succinctly is Tana Talk Three, Mike. You want to yeah. go to Tana Talk 4? Because Tana Talk 3 has those high, high moments. But again, it's those are the moments that we fell in love with Benny and his style from, too. I mean, Rubber Bands and Weight, you know, 97 Ho. Yeah. 97 Ho, Rick, um, Joe Pesci. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You want to do what Tana poll Talk do y'all want us Mike? to do? People are saying poll. What poll do y'all want us to do? No. No, Mike, we're doing the poll right now live. Mike, you know how many records Tana Talk 4 is? It's 12 records. You want to run them down again? Because it's beating Tana Talk 4, too, because Tana Talk 4 isn't as strong on the back end as it is on the front end, Mike. You All of his albums are 12 songs? That's interesting. Yeah. That's, yeah, the, that, the, that's calculated. The, 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 the major release ones have been, has in the ones that have been made 2020 from 2020 on, have been 12 records, Mike. Mm. Comparative analysis. He's literally setting it up for you to do a comparative analysis. Niggas is crazy today. All weekend I've been hearing this bullshit. 
Oh, Coop paused out on us real quick. You there? Watching the court in the hip hop. Okay, yeah, you went did out people, for a second. Did you miss me? I was talking some more cash shit, Mike. I was talking yeah, some more yeah. cash shit, Mike. I was saying, this is why I'm Coop, the best reviewer in hip hop. This is why you're not. Times like this. I want you to understand, you're not me. You didn't just spend the last three days listening to this man's whole catalog backwards and forwards. No, you didn't. I did that. So hopefully, you don't have to go <laughs> through that, Mike. You don't have to listen to any of these records, Mike. I did all this shit for you already. <laughs> I listened to all the mixtapes. I listened to the BSF joint with drama. I listened to the My First Brick mixtape. No, I went and listened to everything. The only thing that this is in conversation with is Tana Talk 3 and Tana Talk 4. And I would place it firmly between the two, as in above Tana Talk 4 and below Tana Talk 3. Burden of proof. Get the fuck out of here with that. All right, let's Stop see. That. I, I want to poll it real quick. We'll um, we'll see what the people say. Oh, I don't want to put this other one in there. Hold on, hold on one second. All right, there we go. Burden of proof for everybody can go. And yeah, we're getting all kind of spam tonight. Y'all spamming in the, in the uh, late night. What were you about to say, Coop? Mike, the spam is better than these niggas' opinion. These niggas is wild. <laughs> <laughs> you understand that they're wild to try to sit up there and compare burden of proof to this album. And I'm not giving you, and I'm really not giving you Sly Green like that. Oh, like I'm not, I'm not. And I love Sly Green. That's my favorite record on burden of proof. And I'm telling you like objectively speaking, no. How about this, Mike? What's the best verse on the two records? Because Benny's verse and Wayne's verse are better than both of Benny's verses on Sly Green. What beat is better, Mike? What the fuck are people talking about? Mm. The beat is better on on Big Dog. The rhymes are better. The I was gonna say better. I think he was rapping better on this album than he was on Burden of Proof, in my personal opinion. Way better, Mike. Yeah. Like, listen to some of the punch lines on here. Break it up in half like a divorce settlement. Rocky relationship with the game, like Iverson and Larry Brown. Oh, I wrote it down because unlike you niggas, I take notes. <laughs> What are we writing this album? Hold on. Hold on. What'd he say? Hold on. Duh, 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 duh. What are we writing this album? Let's get to that, Mike. Yeah. What we won't be doing. Un, un, look, unlike Adriel and Sean, who tried to include the people, this is why I don't include you. This is why I don't <laughs> include you. And I won't be including you. Because you all do shit like this. Well, it Why? looks like Burden of Proof is winning 54% to 46% with 40 votes so Mike, far. But we've already established, Mike, but we have already firmly established that these niggas don't study like I do or do their due diligence. They just well, I wanted to see feel. if even after that comparative analysis of the 12 songs, if people change their mind. But, you know, we'll see. It's 52% to 48%. You don't want to go toe-to-toe with everybody can't go with Burden of Proof. You need to play Tana Talk 4 or Tana Talk 3. Yeah. That's it. It's better because than Burden of Proof doesn't, doesn't have those super highs like Tana Talk 3 does. You know what I'm saying? Or even 4, like you said, with Johnny P's Caddy. Like, Burden of Proof doesn't have those super highs. And I think this album has more highs than Burden of Proof does. And it's more consistent. I think we got LT in the chat, too. Shout out to LT out there. What were we saying? What up, LT? Listen, Mike, for real. Listening to people and their opinions will have you fucked up. It'll have you fucked up. But it's all about I won't be doing that. You know what I'm saying? I love to hear people's you know, input and opinions on our opinions as well. But I will say this. Sometimes the public opinion of certain individuals is skewed. And I feel like this might be one of those cases. I don't know why. Mike, I'm but- telling you. I'm telling you, Mike. These are the same people that said it was written was just okay. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Um, these are people that said it was written just a good rap album, Mike. That's what these people are. Same people. It's them. Let's go through the rubric. Yeah. I know it's getting late. Let's go through the rubric and we got like, you know what I'm saying, a few more things to cover. I, Hold on one second. I'm writing, I'm writing everything down, Mike. Okay. Because unlike these niggas, I take notes. Hold on one second. <laughs> While I finish my note taking. Yeah, there we go. Study and taking notes. They said burden of proof was sequenced better. Mike, the songs Se- aren't better. Yeah, it wasn't enough to sequence. 
to me personally. You know what I mean, right? What are you talking about? Sequence? There's only three <laughs> great records on there. I'm just saying. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you on that. And, and, and again, you guys can go back and look at our original show on Burden of Proof. We're saying the same things here. And I'll go back and listen to Burn the Proof myself, but Coop said he listened to it and compared the two. So, no, Mike, I didn't just listen to Burn the Proof. That's what I'm trying to tell these dudes. Unlike you niggas, I listened to that man's entire catalog over the course of the last three days. How many of you did that? When How you many of you did his that? Entire catalog. What does this album tell you? It tells me that he's grown more as an artist that he's getting credit for. His hook yeah. game is better. His song structure is better. His ability to make more diversified records and talk less about the weight pushing and the hustling days and missing his brother. That's another thing, too, Mike. It's not as much mentions about his brother, not as much mention about his mother's. He's really grown and grown up as an artist. And when I hear people respond like this, it literally makes me feel like you want this nigga to stand on the corner and sell crack on record for his whole career. But then y'all the same people that say push it. No, yeah, they do, Mike, because these are the same people that be like, man, Pusha T need to stop talking about Pusha weight all the time. And then Benny stops talking about it, and this is what y'all do. You can't make up your damn mind. I mean, the people don't always know what they want, but they like what they like. I think it's the energy and the fervor from the dope talk. But, again, I didn't see anything on this album where I felt like his intensity was lacking because – he wasn't talking about those things, right? I think if I had any critique, man, it, it might be it might be like one or two Alchemist and Hit Boy tracks. But it's I think that's nitpicky when you look at the whole scope of it all. Because even My that God. one um that one track that we're talking about, uh what is that, Griselda Express? I mean, in the grand scheme of things, is it really that bad or is the rest of the album that good where it makes it sound like it's incohesive? Just saying. I don't know, man. I, I think that some of the stuff that I'm hearing about this album, I think is a little bit unfair. Um, but I do think it's the best think- album I've heard of 2024 so far. Uh, is it beatable? Sure. Mike, I'll tell you, not only is it beatable, it's going to get beat this year. But as of right now, Mike, everybody listen to Benny Catalog, entire catalog, the last three days. Raise your motherfucking hand. <laughs> That's why I, I am who I, I am. Did. That's why I am who I am. Because I saw the comments. And that's what I'm saying. Instead of me talking shit. I literally dug into this man's entire catalog because that's my job and my responsibility to this culture as a reviewer and an accurate and objective reviewer. Now, those of you that are saying that it's a 3.5 and you think Burden of Proof is better, or you think this, that, and the other, raise your hand if you listen to his entire catalog the last three days. Because if not, I'd rather take my opinion than yours because I put in the work. Well, are you judging All it right. based on his catalog or just as an album you know, in itself? Because that's important, too. Maybe you're looking at it from an individualistic no. standpoint where you're like, okay, well, I'm judging this no, Mike. on what he's done as opposed to the, the overall only, thing. You know what I mean? The only reason I went and listened to the catalog was about the responses that I've been getting. Because when I heard the album, I was like, this is one of his two best albums. Three at the worst. Yeah. That was my initial thought after hearing it one time. And so when I'm reading the comments that I'm seeing, I'm like, no, nah, that don't match up. So let I'm me surprised. go listen to the whole catalog. Let Hold on. Let me go listen to the catalog to see if I'm tripping or to see if the people are tripping. Now, the same way I was honest about Lamar is the same way I'm being honest about this album. Like when I'm wrong, Mike, I say that I'm wrong. When the people are wrong, I'm going to tell the people they wrong. Guess who's wrong? Y'all are wrong. <laughs> well, all right. This kind of reminds me of when the killers put out uh, Sam's Town. I always thought Sam's Town was incredible, even from initial, you know what I'm saying, listen. But I remember Brandon Flowers, lead singer of the Killers, went out there before the album dropped and was saying stuff like, this is going to be the best rock album of the past 15 years, past 20 years, and stuff like that. And the critics killed him for it. But when I heard the album, I was like, this album's pretty great. And I think that some of those things are happening, too. Like When you speak to... 
the fervor of the album and you should have confidence in everything but when you get really specific and so it's the hardest Def Jam album since It's Dark and Hell is Hot. I think that kind of puts an unnecessary target on your back with the fans, if anything. And maybe this is where people are coming from with it. I'm not sure. But if you just listen to the album as an album and kind of like, you know, this is how I do it. I listen to it without a name on it or whatever. I'm just listening to the music. I don't care who made it. You know what I'm saying? I don't care who's on it per se. Just listening to it for the music. It's a dope album. Mike, the first time that I heard this album, I said, damn, that went really, really smooth and really, really well. The only problem that I have is the Griselda record didn't live up to expectations. Then I listened to it the second time and I was like, okay, got some sequencing issues, but this is a dope ass project. Then I listened to the third time and I said, yeah, these motherfuckers tripping. I need to listen to his whole catalog this weekend so that I can come with the proper ammo and foresight to explain my point and my positioning it's fine if y'all feel this way about it nobody's trying to discredit or discount your opinion i'm just saying i'm the only person that i know that actually listened to this record three times in a row and then went back and listened to everything else that the man has made that i could literally put my hands on and then went back and listened to this album three more times and then i started taking notes mike yeah. And so I'm not saying that I'm better than you. I'm just saying I worked harder than you at my opinion. My um And that makes me better. <laughs> Mad Max of the Super Chat says, My January 28th playlist better sequence than these people's albums. Sorry, Coop. It's just okay. 3.75 the most. You know, I think that's an interesting thing that Mad Max said. I think the fact that people have their own playlist now, people feel like they can actually put albums together better than the professionals. <laughs> Mike, the, pe- the people that think they can put albums together usually can't put themselves together in the morning, but okay. <laughs> uh, MC was, that says, rappers need to stop saying they got album of the year. It's corny. I agree. See, that's what I'm saying. I think some of y'all are responding more to the it's dark and hell is hot commentary and more to his personal commentary about critics and about some of the fans than y'all are just looking at the album with no sort of bias. Mike, I bought up the sequencing issues. I bought up what I thought was a less than stellar hit boy and alchemist beat. Like if sequencing and a couple of beats is all you got after what we just went through last year, Mike, do you know what we just went through last year? Like right. it's called Mike in in hustler Mike in hustler terms it's called a drought. Last year was a drought. Yeah, there's with some the water right the here. Hit, yeah. There's some water right here. Yeah. I haven't, the the magic it, I haven't listened to, I haven't listened to the Master Ace or the Boldy and Craven but one time so I'm going to hold my sentiments but this is the best project I've heard this year that I've listened to multiple times and about the people's commentary I went back and listened to the whole catalog I'm going to say this again how many of y'all really went back and listened to the whole catalog right so let's rate this Cause Mike, we like putting things in stone. Cause I'm a, rem- I'm a, I'm a, I'm a remember Mike. I'm gonna remember all these niggas that said this. <laughs> He's right. Remember all you niggas. No, no, no. Mike, 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 Mike. We we gave Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers a three point five. Y'all think this is big? You think this is? Think it's the Big Stepper album? Yeah. What kind of drugs better. are you on? Yeah, this is better than that. What kind of drugs are you on? So let's go down the line, right? What are we rating? Production, Mike. Out of 10, what would you give the production? A 9. Me too. Or 8.5. I'm cool with the 8.5 just because both of them had a misstep. Yeah, we got to give room to for the real 9s. Lyrics, Mike. I liked his mic performance on there. Um, Me too. I'm looking at 8. I'm thinking yeah. eight as well, so we agree. Yeah. Content. Hmm. I would say about seven. Same here. His flow and delivery, Mike. Had a lot of different that's flows on this album. It's the most I think that's a nine. It's the most diverse. Yeah, it's the most diverse I've ever heard him flow too, Mike. Like 
he wasn't rapping over big timers type of beats and uh and the song and the record with Snoop that hit did. He wasn't rhyming over shit like that before, yeah. Mike. Yeah, I get that or not. Impact. I think it's definitely having some impact. It's impacting it these niggas that don't know what they're talking about, and it's impacting me who does know what he's talking about. <laughs> I think that the impact could be uh um that's that's around an eight point five or a nine as well. Cause everybody's talking about it one way or another. I'm going to give it an 8.5 because I'd like to see it translate into some actual numbers for the man seeing how he's actually on Def Jam. Mm -hmm. Now, Mike, sequencing, I think, is the worst part of this project. Hmm. And sequencing. Even and Mike, with and that, I would say main, seven. I've been one of the main people that's saying sequencing matters, Mike. And even with that being said, it's like I was thinking, I was thinking 6.5, 7. Yeah, I, I was thinking about a seven. I don't think the sequence is I don't think the sequence sequencing, excuse me, is that bad. I just think the potential for it to be much better was there. You know what I'm saying? I think I think Big Timers has the last song instead of how to rap is the biggest misstep of this album. That is a big misstep. I will say that. But I think it starts seven. off fairly, you know what I'm saying, accurate. Mike, them first, them first six rec, them first six, seven, eight records is bangers, Mike. I yeah, don't know what the fuck people up. talking about. So yeah, right. Matt Max of the Super Chat says, uh, "See, your problem is uh, morale was the uh, was a one at best, not a three point five. If memory serves, Mike, I tried to give it a three, and the people told us it was a three point five. <laughs> Got a lot of nerve, Mad Max." Got a lot of nerve saying it's a one. You was one of them three point five ass niggas when I tried Let's to see. Mike. Y'all nah, was calling nah, nah. y'all was calling it y'all was calling it an eighth, Mike. I was calling it three grams. <laughs> All right, where we at next? Hooks, Mike. And I'm surprised at what people. Are I saying thought about the, the hooks, hooks are really good. I, I'm really surprised at what people are saying as far as the hooks go. People are gotta, tripping. The hooks. I gotta hooks. listen to the people, so I say about an eight, Mike. I was thinking 8.5 because this is his most impressive hook performance to me. I think the hooks are very impressive. I'm we'll cool go with 8.5. We'll, 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 we'll give an 8 for the people who don't know what they're talking about, telling me to give Mr. Morale a 3.5 and then calling this a 3.5. You <laughs> niggas is wild. You niggas is wild. Mr. Morale and the big steppers. Song structure. Um... Damn, I don't want to be redundant and say eight again, but I'm thinking about that because, I mean, I like the way these songs were put together. Me too. Hold on, Mike. Before we, before I, while I'm tallying this up, Mike, let me ask you something. Mm hmm. Remember when J. Cole dropped the offseason? Mm hmm. We gave that a four, Mike. Isn't this better than the offseason? I think so, for sure. Because I, I just don't want to talk about Kendrick and his whack ass album. I actually want to talk about another go to this era and his actual solid, good album that people liked and was well received. Off season was a four, Mike. This is better than the off season. That's why I understand it what is. people's talking about. It is better than the it, off season, and that's Cole, Mike. And yeah. Cole was rapping at a high level then. Yeah, and it was still just a four, and this is better than that. So I don't want to hear that three, three point five, three point seven five shit. Since you love Hustler to so much. Since you niggas love hustling talk so much, get a motherfucking <laughs> scale and add some more weight to it and give this shit a higher score. Rubber bands Fake and weight. But you know what? It's interesting because looking at the trajectory that uh, J. Cole's currently on and the fact that we don't really go back to the offseason like that, I think that demotes the offseason even more. Because with this oh, run that Cole's been having recently, people should be running to the offseason. You know what I'm saying? Matt Max with the Super Chat says, I was always the one telling y'all uh, that it was a two. <laughs> what the hell? And I, for a fact, um, I'm sorry, and for a fact, the sequence, is I sequence better than the pros. That's what he's saying. Matt Max, I'm sure you sequence better than the pros for sure. Um, Mike, when we rate this album, it gets a 64 out of 80, which gives it an 80% which is literally a half a point better than Paisley Dreams by the Game. It gets an 80%. Okay. 
That would put it that would put it in the lead. We're not being egregious. We're not overhyping the praise. If we were giving out a grade, it would get an 80% to Paisley Dream 79%. We're not tripping. You niggas are. I think that's fair. Speaking of which. It is fair, Mike, because 